I'm sure some of you may be wondering I'll keep an why eye I brought on these the... Dr. Blow videos six months ago. I took a few weeks off, and then over the course of the was new I just year, completely decided inaudible? I would what, take what the opportunity I about to, to catch up on some reading and make changes to my out content, by the video. which I had been wanting to do for some time. I then suffered a minor middle breakdown. Like I say, I haven't used this setup in some time. So, um, where it's became a blur in the years, which doesn't start like, like a few broken things that are going to be kind of technical. I became more desperate to return to productive work and in the process putting anything together. I just wanted to play this book in case people haven't seen it. The days and nights blended together, and I lost my sense of association with the world around me. Year of isolation due to the current global pandemic may have also been an aggravating factor. I blame the Alarm Space Jam video. It's good this now. experience has forced Thank me you. to confront things about myself that I had been suppressing for many years. Things that momentarily yeah, that's the thing too, to is me like, more in my as I'm becoming more, as I'm coming to terms more of the fact that I specifically have ADHD, it's not just, because before I would always characterize it as just like, oh yeah, I'm kind of scatterbrained, like, I don't know. It's like as if I, as if these were like just personality traits that I could flick on and off and then, oh, well, I accidentally left this personality trait on. Like, no, I have ADHD and it's going to fundamentally affect the way I react to things. So I know part of that, with, when it comes to streams, that's the reason, I think a big part of why I've always been so anxious about regular streams when I'm not just, sorry, when I'm not just like playing a game or something. Because when it's a game, I can focus on the game. Um, and then like when I run out of my train of thought, I can just go back to the game. But when it's just me, I really am at the whims of my current train of thought. Um, for anyone who doesn't have ADHD or like, I don't know, something kind of adjacent, it's like this thing where you're on this constant train of... This is my experience anyway. I'm on a constant train of thought and then anything that sparks something uh, immediately wipes out what I was thinking about before. I, I've realized recently that's the reason, actually I'll go back to the full screen for a second here, that's the reason I don't like the idea of doing debates and I, I don't really, I wouldn't want to get involved in like a heated debate. Is I, I get frustrated because a few times I've tried to engage with those sorts of things and it's like, <laughs> I know this might sound pretentious, but I know I have good arguments in my head, right? I, and I don't just mean that in the sense of like, oh yeah, uh, I actually had a good argument, but I just, I wasn't thinking about it at the time. Like literally, I know I have thought out the things that I have to say before I go and argue with someone about these things. But then I don't know if it's the environment, the audience, something about the, obviously the heated element too, if, if people are just being shitty and not even trying to, if they're not trying to be like a friendly thing and it's just like immediately on the aggression, so then that also kind of, and it's like I have the good arguments, but I can't get to the, I can't make the connection that allows me to produce the good argument out of my mouth because my brain constantly goes blank. Like I just want to be confrontational about it, like say like, you know, they will ask very, people might ask very pointed questions that maybe that specific thing triggers me to think about something else. And then the initial thing that I had to say completely goes out of my head. Uh, Dark Melica, thank you for the subscription. Also, I think we had some other subscriptions too. Let me double check this. Hat Brackets, uh, thank you for the resubscription also. Wait, is that it? I thought the number went up more than that. Okay, I'm not sure. Anyway, thank you very much for the subscriptions. Um, yeah, like, my conversations always roam all over the place. And the weird thing is, is in person, it's fine. I feel like in person, maybe it's specifically a debate thing, or maybe it's just having the audience there. But it's like, uh, in person, when it's just talking to a person about something, I it's rare that I get, like, totally thrown off and don't even know my arguments anymore. I feel like... I'm generally more eloquent in person, but I think when it's like this very heated thing, when when someone's being antagonistic, for sure, because when someone's being antagonistic, the thing they'll often do is they'll twist the context of the conversation because they want to throw you off, right? So like, or maybe they'll throw in something, total, some total aside um, that then you want to address. And then by that point, by the time you've addressed their aside, you've forgotten what your big point was to the original thing that they'd said. Um, and then you start going, um, uh, I, 
Mm, well, and then it's like, ha, huh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And it's like, I know I do, but you just, I'm so thrown off. And then I think obviously that just gets amplified a hundred times when you have like so many people in a chat skidding by and then oh. it's a weird th it's actually really interesting that I think about it. the way that Twitch chat is like um, Twitch chat is intrusive thoughts once it gets to a certain size a Twitch chat is an intrusive thought because as the as the chat starts to scatter this is actually quite a nice chat and in general my chat has always been pretty nice you you tend to like I mean I, I don't mind if people want to like just say a bunch of things in chat, but generally speaking, my chat is uh, a lot of like bigger chunks of text, I guess, which is nice because then that gives people a chance to give a little bit more of a nuanced take or give some context and then people can read that. And I like that more when it's just skidding by. It's like an intrusive thought. It's like you stumble, you start to stutter or something. And then when the chat's skidding by, it's like, you know, most people in general aren't really shitty, but I mean, some communities are. And then you just start seeing like little comment, little shitty comments, just like skidding up. And then it, it unavoidably throws me off. And I think I was denying that for a long time. I was denying that that was even happening to me. Like I was just pretending that like, Oh no, that, or, or rather, how about this? For a long time, I pretended that, um, that was just Ideas a, are held an hostage issue I had. in a debate by an obligation to aesthetic fulfillment. Yeah, that's a good, that, that's actually a good way of putting it, a requisite. And thank you for the resubscription. Um, I'm not holding it against you that you definitely threw me off. <laughs> I know you didn't mean to. Oh, yeah, so what I'm saying is, uh, for a long time I denied that or didn't want to speak up about that, how that affected me because that feels like a personal response, that felt like a personal responsibility thing to me. Like, that felt like a, well, that's my problem, right? I should just learn to filter that stuff out. And sometimes I do, definitely sometimes I do. Um, and I think another part of the ways I. Um, tricked myself was that when I had those times when I felt very clear and very um, well when I when I really felt like I was on the ball with my thoughts and my arguments and like I didn't give a fuck what people were saying and like it just didn't affect me at all the lie that I was telling myself was that that is my default state and then like the times where I'm being kind of sensitive and you know I let myself get I mean I don't like fucking see a shitty comment and then get upset about it I'm beyond that stage I think that was probably like I would say there's probably times in 2015, 2016 when I would get certain things. That was probably just because at that point I probably had like 50 followers. So whenever I would get dogpiled, it really was a dogpile and I had literally nobody on like arguing on my side. So it would be like you'd get 100 shitty people in your replies and then nobody would be backing you up. So you're like, oh, I'm just fucking alone in the universe, <laughs> right? Like th those were the times where I felt um, actually upset about those things. But definitely as the years have gone by and I'm sort of as an adult, I know that people can skew, cer like certain situations can be constructed in certain way to make a really fucking weird, um, just like toxic, view seem like it's the normal view and you're the one who's weird for not agreeing with it as an as i've you know built a following and as i've just sort of removed myself from situations a little bit more and really like looked at the like took a took a step back and looked at situations um those things don't affect me as much, but they do still throw me off. And I used to sort of punish myself by saying, no, that's like a weak part of me that I just need to like basically pretend it doesn't exist and then like fake it till you make it type thing. Um, but I can't. It's just, a, it's just a part of me that um, my brain works in a certain way that um, when I'm on the spot, at least, this is the reason that I write, um, when I'm on the spot, I'll be on my train of thought and then any number of things can throw me off and get me thinking about something totally different. And that does have benefits, I will say that. Um, I've tweeted about this in the past, but like I will say that if I could like... 
one of the one of the nice things is that I know that if I could go back and change things, I don't think I would at this point. Like if I could have, because because I've had some, um, I guess. I started to build a grudge against teachers that I had when I was younger who I knew were educated in a little bit more in child psychology or would have been able to spot the signs that I had ADHD. Like, for instance, the fact that literally every single one of them said, hmm, when Jack's interested in something, it's really easy to get him to be very, like, into, like, engaged and involved in the class. And when he's not interested, he just doesn't do any work at all. And he just, like, doodles on the side margins of the paper and he and he just doesn't get his work done and whenever he's called on he just doesn't know he has no idea what's even being talked about every one of my teachers said that <laughs> but no, none of them ever like put together like oh maybe there's something fundamentally that needs to be worked on here um but what i've come to realize is that it's still all the experiences i had still resulted in the person that i am now and while I wouldn't say, like, oh, yeah, so it's good to keep, the, like, that information from young people. Um, I'm certainly not saying that. But for me personally, having my um, way of thinking, like, the way that my brain is formatted has helped me in a lot of ways. Because, yeah, I get thrown off a lot, but I also absorb a lot. Like, I'm constantly switching between subjects when those subjects... Like, when something no longer is interesting to me, um, it's kind of like a death. Like, that, that subject's kind of dead to me at the minute because there's a new thing. And then I, I would latch onto new thing and new thing and new thing. And I think it's given me a fairly broad uh, look at the world that I don't think I would have had without the specific way that my brain is. <laughs> Windows Photos just made me an album out of my YouTube thumbnails. Thank you, Windows Photos. Whatever interests you is what's giving you dopamine. Right, yeah. This is um, day five or six of me taking antidepressants. Um, and I wouldn't say I've really... I, I think I have a fairly low dosage. Um, I could probably get the exact prescription of people in chat who are curious about it. Because I, I feel like I don't really care. I, I'm fairly okay with being open about it. Um, I was in a low... Like, hen, like I was talking about in the video, my update video, I was in a very low place around February, March time. Um, and so I just wanted to, like, make an active effort to get myself out of it. Because I think what I realized was that it was... It was in here. Like, my issues were here. And I know that because I'm financially secure. I'm in a loving relationship. I have a loving family. Um, I have the freedom right now, financially, while obviously I'm not fucking, like, mega bucks. Theoretically, I could probably book a flight and take a vacation anywhere on the planet, right? Well, not anywhere on the planet, but <laughs> anywhere where tourists would be allowed, I'm going to pretend COVID's not happening right now, but like, you know what I mean. In theory, I have total freedom at this point. I, I'm one of those, um, I'm, I'm in a, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> like, um, I'm not, uh, while I wouldn't say, I'm not like the fucking 1%, but I don't have the same level of financial desperation that I did for large chunks of my life, or specifically financial limitations um, that maybe convinced me, or issues with relationships, or issues with family or friends, that would have led me to believe that those were the issues, like those were the things, like, oh, if only I had a loving relationship, oh, if only I had money. I know it's not those things, because I have those things, and I, I, I still... February, March, it was like a fucking mess in my head. So I knew that it was specifically something in my head. Um, so yeah, I, I sought treatment. Right now I'm on a fairly low dosage of antidepressants. And I really don't feel anything, but I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be feeling anything. I've, I've been more productive over the last few days. Like I made the update video, but I'm not sure as to what extent um, that's just because... Um, what extent that's only because uh, I sort of got myself in that headspace. Um, one second, actually. Uh, I'll finish playing the video. Give me a second.
I tarlot said hurtling back at me and finally got me to seek professional consultation.